will have a very busy program because we will have five live cases. Uh, in between, we will switch, and we have three additional talks. Our colleague, Dr. Nienhaber, unfortunately is ill. However, his talk will be given by Dr. Scheinert from the Angiology Department uh, out of Leipzig. And to start with the session, we like to introduce uh, Dr. Coselli first, who will later on operate uh, case 12. So I invite Dr. Coselli uh, to give his talk and start the program with his introductions, please. Well, once again, it's, uh, it, it's a terrific opportunity and a pleasure to be here. When Dr. Moore returns, please uh, let him know that I uh, express my gratitude for for the invitation and to be on such a, an esteemed faculty. What, uh, uh, what Fred asked me to do was to try to uh, uh, give you some sense of our, our thoughts on the treatment and results of our treatment of descending thoracic and thoracobdominal aortic aneurysms, but take that and use it as a, a, a nidus to move into uh, really what we're doing more of today, uh, and that is the stent graft treatment of uh, thoracic uh, aortic pathology. I uh, actually got in the abdominal aortic stent grafting about seven or eight years ago and have been putting stent grafts in the descending thoracic aorta now for about five years. How do we advance this? That's Nothing's awesome. happened. I come to you for this at Texas Medical Center, and I'm actually with Baylor College of Medicine. We've had an interesting little transition over the last year or so. We've, we've moved uh, from the Methodist Hospital and placed me at the to St. Luke's and placed me at the Texas Heart Institute. And not only having had the opportunity to work for many years with Michael DeBakey, I'm now finding myself working side by side with Dr. Denton Cooley. So it's been, a, been an interesting uh, go of things. We'll start with the uh, historical perspective. And I, th I think it's important for us to maintain our skills uh, and maintain the excellent results that have been developed in the, the open treatment of thoracic aortic pathology because I, I don't think that's going to go away. So, Quite certainly, uh, hybrid procedures are going to be part and parcel of what we do in the future so that our, our abilities in this open approach are, uh, are going to remain important. Uh, you, don't need to know the, you don't need to be reminded of the details in this particular audience, but through a left thoracotomy, it's been for quite a number of years now, rather standard practice to replace uh, descending thoracic aortic aneurysms with, uh, with Dacron grafts and with or without the use of uh, left heart bypass. Uh, incidentally, in our own work, although we use left heart bypass not infrequently in descending aneurysms, we've been, uh, been unable to demonstrate conclusively and uh, with statistical significance that left heart bypass actually reduces the incidence of paraplegia in such cases. But in patients who uh, are compromised from a cardiac standpoint as well as from a renal standpoint, left heart bypass clearly has has some utility. This is some work from Dr. Crawford in a review of 832 uh, descending thoracic aortic aneurysms and just demonstrates from the, uh, uh, the 70s and 80s uh, through uh, at least to the early 90s the, uh, the remarkable improvement with the results specifically with, uh, with mortality. Unlike stent grafting, which we'll get into here in a few minutes, the long-term um, uh, aspect of the, uh, the, the follow-up, the, the longevity and the durability of this approach is, uh, has been known uh, for some time and is demonstrated here in this particular Kaplan-Meier uh, sur survival curve. This is from a personal experience of a little, little uh, over 450 descending aneurysms uh, in a review we completed a, a year or so ago. And the incidence of paraplegia is quite low. Uh, as well as the overall uh, uh, operative mortality. And this is all comers. But if you take a selected group of uh, uh, patients undergoing stent grafting, I'll show you some of the results of that here in a minute, uh, the instance of paraplegia and paraparesis, for instance, in, in Criado's work uh, in descending stenting remains at about 4%. Uh, as I mentioned to you earlier, uh, using, uh, uh, using left heart bypass versus uh, no left heart bypass, we've unable to show that it's had an impact on paraplegia and these more limited uh, aneurysms of the descending thoracic aorta. Uh, this doesn't quite hold true for the more extensive thoracobdominal aortic aneurysms, as you can see here, uh, not an infrequently encountered uh, uh, situation in patients with, as shown here, Marfan syndrome, previous composite valve graft replacement, and now a dissection in a long thoracobdominal aortic aneurysm. Within the few moments uh, provided me, I'm not going to go through with you all the uh, possibilities and efforts that have been made to reduce the incidence of paraplegia, but some that we've focused on.